Welcome back to Steve Rob Reviews. Today I'll be loading my lawn tractor up on the back of my trailer and I'm going to see if I can provide some information and some tips that maybe you haven't really thought about and uh, securing your load, right? So I did have to go and buy some new ramps. I needed arched ramps, specifically arched ramps. Now with me and the tractor, the total weight is about 700 pounds. So the ramps that I got are these ones right here by Ericsson. I don't sell anything on my channel, this is just me providing information. And if you take a look there, it's uh, 07441, and they're 90 inches long, 12 inches wide, and they have an arch. They fold in half, and they are just the cat's meow. So I'll show you me load the tractor up here, and then I'll uh, bring you back, and I'll show you exactly how I actually fasten everything down Right. Well, let's start off right here. Of course, when you're uh, loading up your ramps, you really want to put your two ties down there to strap it to your trailer so these don't kick out on you. And the first thing you notice, yeah, I have a chain that goes across the back here. And just think about it. If you get a uh, an inspector behind you and uh, he's looking at your load, thinking maybe he's going to pull you over, he's going to say, you know what, this looks logical here. I don't think we need to pull him over and teach him how to actually strap down anything. So they go on their way and they leave you alone, right? So let's just take a look at the back here first. And you can see how it's done. And all I've done is hooked up this right here. And that replaces where most people would put their ball, you know, to pull a little trailer or something. And are you wondering what's this all about? Well, this is just actually, you know, just to hold the seat down. And I just put a rib nut. You can see in here I put a rib nut in here and then I put a bolt and a couple of washers. And I'll take this off when uh, I get up to my camp. And the reason behind that is, well, you can imagine going down the highway, this thing will be flopping back and forth, up and down. I've seen so many trailers, you know, with lawn tractors in the back and the seat is just taking a beating. So, uh, yeah, that's a good thing to do there. And you can see how it's put over here. And do these straps ever come undone, you know, like the uh, ratchet strap? Like they kind of just click in there, right? But you know what? I always seem to kind of wrap it around here just so they don't come apart. So let's take a look at another thing. Well, if you get over here, you can see I've got an outrigger. I got one in here and one in the other side. And I always put these down because as you load up your tractor, it's going to go down. And the worst thing that you can do to a trailer is put so much weight on the back that it'll damage your hitch going on top of the ball. So this is a good thing. Now if you don't have outriggers on your trailer, you can just put like a uh, like a jack in the center over here, you know, underneath, just so it doesn't all go down. Because what happens is, once the uh, lawn tractor's on the front of the trailer, well, it'll lift up a bit, right? So that's how it's fastened on there. And, if you're wondering, you've seen this on here. You wonder, like, what's this all about? Well, this just holds down the hood because there's no locks on this hood. So this just holds down the hood because, yeah, I've seen these hoods bouncing around, flopping, going all the way forward and back. Now, if you're driving on nice, smooth highways is one thing, but you know what? A lot of times, we're not. So here's the attachment point right here. Now, I made a video on doing this, how to attach your attachment point to a tractor because if you take a look at this there is not a lot of spots on a lawn tractor to attach a good attachment point that'll go from here and go all the way across and to the front so you know that's a good idea plus you know when I built this bumper well that's a good idea too you see how it come up and just kinda just kiss the uh, wood there a bit and uh, I built that bumper too, so if you want to take a look how to make yourself a bumper, I'll leave a link down below for that too. We're on the other side of the tractor now, and you can see the tie down right there. And of course, 
this tractor is wider than my trailer with the discharge chute. So I just put a bungee cord there, drilled a hole here, and uh, that's what it looks like right there. So I mean that's very secure, not going anywhere. So that's pretty much it right there. And that lawn tractor is ready to head down the uh, highway. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you back into the shop. And I did a modification to these ramps. So I'm going to show you the modification first. And then I'm going to tell you exactly what capacity ramps should you buy. So here we are back in the shop and you can definitely tell there's quite an arch on these ramps. And uh, I need that particular arch to actually use them. But first, let's go over and take a look at a little bit of a modification that I did. And all I did was, I just riveted in a couple of pieces here because this was just, this piece wasn't here. Now, actually at the back here, you could tell that it's just a hollow piece. So, I mean, this is all hollow. So, up at my camp, well, these are being used on the sod. So I would just fill up these tubes, right? So here it is on the ground, and you could see, yeah, just a couple of rivets, and that actually strengthens it as well from both sides, because the ground sometimes is not always even. So let's get to, uh, I'm gonna show you right now first exactly where I'm gonna be using these up at my camp, and I've got a picture here of my Kubota tractor on the ramps that I have, and I want you to take a look at them and I'm going to show you why I needed arched ramps. Well here's a picture of me and I'm just starting to go up the ramps and that's my little garage up at my camp and you can just visualize the difference between where that arrow is and the bottom of the tractor or the tractor axle. So as you actually start to move up the back wheels will go up the ramp and the front wheels will actually go inside the shop and the difference between the ramp at the top and the bottom of the tractor will decrease. So if I tried to use some ramps on this lawn tractor, well, you know what? I would hit the, uh, the cutter uh, going into the shop first time I ever tried it because these ramps are only about six feet long and they are quite steep and uh, I use the ramps for the ATV and the tractor only but I definitely need these ramps to go on there. Well, as you can see, yeah, that ramp is pretty steep, isn't it? A lot of people look at that picture and they go, are you gonna tip over or what? No, no, I've taken that tractor and the ATV up and down at least 100 times, no problem. But with these particular ramps here, if they were not arched, if I had just had bought the regular straight ones, the problem would be, if you can just visualize here, that, the same thing would happen even if you had, you know, eight foot long ramps. It's when you get to the top and you have to make that grade over is where the bottom of the tractor with the cutter, you know, would actually get all jammed up. But if you take a look at the arched ones, by the time I transfer from the bottom here onto the second piece, well, the tractors got over that hump and the back wheels are coming up faster. So it's more level if you can kind of visualize before it goes inside the uh, little bit of a garage there. So I am going to make a modification for this so I don't have to use these retaining straps anymore. And I'm going to show you that in the future. And I'm also going to show you, you know, the, the uh, lawn tractor actually going inside to show that, yes, it does work. But if you take a look at that, you can see that it's all just sod. You know, it's just all pasture everywhere, right? And yeah, if I were to just not fill in the bottom of them ramps there. Well, it would just fill up with sod, right? The holes would just fill up with sod all the time and dig right in. So how, how much capacity should you get when you're buying a set of ramps? Now these ones here are 750 pounds a piece. They do make a next level up, which is uh, 1,500 pounds a piece, but I don't need that. So with me and the tractor weight together is roughly 700 pounds. And each one of these ramps is 750. Two together, 1,500 pounds. Why did I get one instead of just getting them that were a lower weight? Well, I'll tell you, in my experience, on everything I've ever seen that's ever been designed, is designed for ideal conditions, which means your surface that you're on is ideal, 
and at the bottom end of your ramp is ideal. They're not, you know, twisted or, you know, it's perfect, right? And that's how they classify the weights is how much you can carry under ideal conditions. So whenever I'm buying a set of ramps, I like to go twice as big. So I only need 700 pounds. But if I go 1500, well, guess what? It's combined between the both. And if the ground isn't perfectly level, well, you're not going to twist your ramp and, uh, you know, wreck your ramp and it's, you know, and cause an unsafe condition, right? So you might as well go a little bit bigger for the price. And I mean, I paid, including shipping to my door and everything, I paid $158 for both of these ramps. And the 3,000 pound ones are 1,500 a piece. That was uh, $280. So, I mean, depending on if you've got like a heavier piece of machinery, well, then you got to go bigger, right? But I like to always rate everything twice as much because, you know, if you take a look at that land there that I have up in my camp, it's not perfectly flat, right? So, I'm going to have to actually make a couple of divots, one on the left and one on the right, and then the bottom of these ramps will just slot right into the sod. Like, I'm just going to cut a little bit of sod out there so they can't pull down. And I'm also going to do something to the top of the ramp. And uh, hopefully I can show you that in the future. But that's the way I load up a tractor and uh, take it down the highway. And, you know, the whole idea is you want to make sure that whatever you're loading inside your trailer, if everything goes wrong, you get into an accident and everything else, that tractor has to stay inside the trailer. So it's got to be fastened down real good. Now, did you notice you have a lot of extra straps there? So I just run the straps back and forth in between the, uh, you know, the retainers that I have on there. And then I just get a zip tie, zip tie it up so it can't be going, you know, anywhere. I've seen so many trailers going down the highway and the leftover pieces of ratchet straps is just flopping in the wind like that. And, you know, that's the first sign, you know, if a police is behind you or anything like that, he's going to say, buddy, like what's going on here? you can't tie down your trailer with just a ratchet strap let me take a look at the rest of that and see what's going on so save yourself a lot of headache make sure everything on that trailer is fastened down so that if you get into an accident it's not going nowhere so thanks for joining me here today i hope you maybe got a couple of tips out of this and stay tuned for the future and uh i'm going to show you me actually loading this lawn tractor using these ramps into my camp and check out the videos below if you want to learn how to make the uh uh, the front bumper or if you want to see how I actually attached the attachment points to the lawn tractor because you know what there's there's none on there so you guys take care come back again and uh, let's have some more fun cheers <music>